The Northwest MEC for Community Safety, Vessels Morueng, is expected to engage with stakeholders in Stillfontein on their efforts to bring these illegal miners to the surface. Morueng was appointed to chair a rescue team established by the police minister, Senzum Kunu. Let's get you an update now with News in Africa's Rifilwe Saboko. She is live on the scene for us. Rifilwe, we spoke to the uh, Community Safety MEC here on the show just last week. Zinika Mklaba is also standing by for more on the story. Rifilwe, has, has the uh, Community Safety MEC now changed his tune? Last week he told us there would be no assistance for these miners. That's the stance that he took last week to say that there will be no assistance to uh, these miners. But I guess with the court order that we saw, uh, Michelle, uh, directing that uh, those miners should be assisted, help should be sent to them, uh, food, uh, water, medication, amongst others. And also with the issue of having to open another exit, it almost sounds like, uh, you know, they are somewhat changing a tune. I mean, also with uh, that rescue team that was established by the Minister in, of Police, Esenzo Mkunu, Vessels Morueng, uh, chairing that uh, rescue team that has been established. And with him expected to today have that stakeholder meeting, him, the, the statement also indicates that, that later on, after that meeting, which is expected to be at 2 o'clock uh, today, he will then, after that, engage the media. But, I mean, we, we also, uh, just as we are in touch with the community leaders on the ground that has started with that rescue operation, they had indicated that on Saturday they had took down food today they took now water and just before you came to ask Michelle we saw uh, as what seems like a letter that comes from those that are underground uh, reading that Sitela Ama ARVs uh, on that letter that I've also shared uh, you know uh, which then says those that are underground are also communicating with those that are on surface but we saw that statement as well Michelle from the uh, presidency President Sir Ramaphosa indicating that uh, what is happening here in Stillfontein remains a criminal act. Stillfontein mine is a criminal scene, and that's why we will continue to see uh, police officers, SANDF members, continue to conduct their uh, operation in terms of Vala Umkoti, in terms of uploading, upholding law and order, and ensuring that those that come out. Uh, they are going to be arrested and fully face the mighty law of the might law the might of the law or the you know and, and be processed accordingly but also indicating that uh, as much as there is that directive that there's going to be a rescue team a stance of on the police uh, not going underground because based on the information that they are receiving some that are underground they are heavily armed uh, but also indicating that from the information that they are receiving uh, it, it's this is a a a syndicate, you know, a criminal, uh, well-organized syndicate, and therefore that's why it's important that they will continue to conduct this, uh, you know, th authorities, law enforcement authorities should be able to conduct this operation, ensure that those that are underground, they are resurfacing. Of course, as they come out, he, or that statement also indicating that they will be given the necessary medical attention because uh, those that have not been with water, with food, with their medication, coming out being weak, critical, and therefore needing that medical attention. However, after that, when they've regained their strength, they will be then be detained uh, and also be taken through the proper uh, court processes, Michelle. Sinikum Flaba, you're also on the scene tracking the story. It sounds like it's going to be a mammoth operation. You know, last week we were talking about four and a half thousand Zamazamas being underground. Do we have a revised and more concrete uh, decision on just how many people are still stuck underground and how long this retrieval or rescue operation will take? Well, Michelle, I can confirm that to this particular point. Um, there is no number that has been confirmed um, by either side, except the number we were, we were dealing with last week. We were talking about over 4,000 um, illegal miners being underground, despite the few that has come out, which are under 15. You know, there's no number that is exact this point, which has been confirmed by authorities. But also, remember, you know, late last week, uh, towards the weekend, government came out disputing, you know, that figure of over 4,000 illegal miners, saying that, well, 
practically and realistically, they are assuming or they are looking at between 350 to 400 um, illegal miners underground. So there is no confirmation from either side because of the fact that it's been very difficult for law enforcement, um, you know, to try to really account on the number of people underground besides the information that was communicated by one of the committee members who had gone underground, you know, some time ago. So as we've been tracking, you know, these strategies which have been taking place here in Klexdorf, we made mention earlier on of a site that is, you know, um, built over a mass grave here in the Northwest province. I understand that this tragedy took place in 1978, um, just two, uh, two years after after the 1976 um, uprising which took place in Soto. So this was during the state of emergency. We understand that where we are right now is a mass grave. Over 90 workers died on this very same surface when you know, uh, um, you know, uh, a stone fell on them, a mine stone fell on them. And of course, due to the uh, complication in terms of the underground operation at the time, you know, they could not be retrieved or their bodies could not be retrieved. So they remained underground. And of course, I'm going to read out something that is also engraved in this particular site. It reads as follows. They rest 2,570 meters below this memorial where they died on the 26th of April 1978. Uh, may they rest in peace. On the other side, Michelle, as my colleague, I was trying to zoom into those, you will see a list of people. And of course, they did not engrave all their names. As I said, that we are dealing, we are talking about over 90 people. Here, they have about 16 people who are engraved there. We see the name of Moli Fikazo, Kindwe, Nato, and several others. So this gives us a perspective in terms of the dangers you know of this particular area especially for those who are illegally underground so this is the reality these are the miners who died underground and of course this was back as 1978 and of course at that time these operations were legal so companies and government agencies had all the resources at their disposal and of course it was state of the art of that time when it comes to equipment and they could not retrieve those who were underground even the bodies of the deceased could not be retrieved so you can only imagine then you know how complicated the situation where my colleague Rafilwe is because we're talking about something that happened in 1978 it's 2024 nothing has been changed in terms of equipment and at this point that mining operation is illegal so it's going to be difficult then to try to mobilize resources but we'll hear what the MEC of community safety here in this province will table when he briefs the media about the steps government will be taking in terms of putting together all the necessary resources but we know now that there will be experts who will be brought in into this particular site to come and try to assist this particular jury, uh, um, you know, operation. Minister Senzo, Minister of Police, when he was here, he did mention that there's an issue of time. So there's a very limited time in which all these processes and all these uh, operations should be concluded within. We'll see then when we hear the briefing from the chairperson of this mine um, government rescue team when he briefs the media in the afternoon, Michelle. And Siniko, surely this court order now that police stop blocking the access uh, and exit points for these miners is uh, an indictment on uh, the comments coming from the minister in the presidency last week, Mbuta Chabeni, who said that no assistance would be offered to these miners and that they would be, quote unquote, smoked out. I believe that's very true, Michelle. However, I think um, the, the, the response to that very safe st uh, statement, which was uh, attacked by a minister in the presidency, got very serious, you know, negative reaction from the members, especially those in the human rights sector, members of civil society. But ordinary South Africans, even those South Africans or general public was divided on that statement, still is whether the minister, you know, was correct, because there are people who are saying that actually the minister was uttering a statement which is shared, or a view which is shared by many South Africans in terms of, you know, the problems South Africans have been, you know, um, living under at the hands of illegal miners across South Africa, but also human rights activists condemn them. So I think they, that is why uh, the human rights and civil society groups took the matter to court. And of course, the court order really, uh, really did you know, make mention and order government to open some of those sites. But as we've been you know, walking up and down about two kilometers away from the site where my colleague Refilo is, there are several open holes which are not closed. But you, know, you cannot 
access underground because some of those holes, you know, are flooded with water from underground. Some are enclosed with concrete. So it's going to be very interesting to see where exactly and which side is government going to reopen um, for those illegal miners underground to come out. But you also understand that we've been hearing that where my colleague Rafilo is, is the only safest and the most, you know, um, easy to access point where people can be able to come onto the surface, whether by themselves or through the efforts, you know, made by those who are currently on the surface. Let's go back to our colleague Rifilwe Soboko. Rifilwe, what do we know about the extent of this uh, team, this rescue team that's been established by the police minister to help in efforts to bring these Zamazamas back to the surface? And what's the time frame here? There's not been a time frame, uh, Michelle. You remember that after that meeting uh, last year when Minister of Police Senzo Mkudu was here, it had at that moment an announcement of the establishment of that rescue team was made. And also the announcement that Community Safety MEC in the Northwest Province, Vessels Moroeng, will be chairing uh, that task team or rescue team. And uh, like I indicated a little bit earlier on, 2 o'clock this afternoon or today, there's going to be that and stakeholder engagement. The statement just indicates that, uh, you know, it's a stakeholder engagement. Uh, but we also understand that all those that are trained, uh, medically trained, so as well, are those that will form part, amongst those that will form part of that rescue team and also uh, be able to go, um, you know, uh, underground. Then it also then speaks to, uh, or rather raise a question about the community that had took matters into their own hands, you know, just last week at about 40, 50, uh, community members that were on the surface holding on to that rope, uh, pulling those that had been tied from underground um, to be, um, that had been, were tied underground to then resurface. Today we are really seeing a very limited number of community members who are here. You remember that they had halted their uh, uh, operation indicating that they were fatigued, but at around 11 o'clock, half past 11, we saw that operation being conducted. And like I had also indicated, we also have a letter here, which uh, these that are community members that are part of uh, the uh, this operation, uh, which the letter reads, Sitela ama ARVs, please, abantu baya dinga ngapa siyatela, which loosely translates that they are asking or pleading for ARVs, uh, Michelle, indicating that people that are underground, uh, they are in need of those. But let's speak to one of the community members here who has been in touch and just to tell us about what happened so far. Abu so Haba haba sa fasi moto so ba ba kupa tapo yangu end ba hizi wana tapo le ifedi. Tapo yano kai ifedi le sio sisi ra kuhurenga operation ni yalo na kajana. Asa uchape seka kure you are limited in terms of the resources ele didrisa. Ya yano no ibata orita ma re re gompa gati na perba blele kure tapo yele ifedi le akasana tapo. Like last year re le ra raise the donation. Rafumana chelja or Hono Lor Gatapoyung. So Ibata or Leno Rebita meeting maybe by tomorrow. Read the Copa Lempaga, Jerry Ruto or no Barry. Bagahona Hapo or no Bacopan, such a dear one, Rahono or Loza Matapoyung. In Tayako Hotamilo Janung, a rescue team, Etan Holekahori, you know, Merco Odira Halafano, Udira Haleka Pelekahor, Elin Sili Tarasan, Yahahore Tapo, Hali Dirisa Hutamoto Moani, may the rescue team, my Sia Hore, but to Bakatu Kabunzi, Lady Bukhalaya. Eh, government, if we now lay plan yawns about to go, I get a plan, it's plenty of quality about to fell a go, Gumkoti. I haven't said, I'm going to read the real Bakwale. It's more Bakwale, but Balekamo. So our Bonabanale plan or Bansabatu. You're right, that's a plan, you're right. You're not great, I believe.
to Mandla Charles. Mandla Charles there, uh, Michelle, responding to the issue of the establishment of the rescue team to say that's exactly what they have been you know, calling for all along, uh, to say that people must come out in numbers and if that rescue team is going to see to it that people are coming out in, dumb, in numbers or they are being rescued uh, you know, to save life, it's exactly what they are accepting. But he was also indicating an issue of the limited resources. You'll remember that it's only a rope that they are using and so far it seems like that rope now, you know, it's losing its strength and they are now going to meet to, as, together as the community to see if they can raise funds to be able to get uh, another rope. What he was also explaining was that when they sent, started to, or resumed their operation today, they took out the rope down and just as, as they thought that they, they somebody who's coming, that rope came with this letter of those that are underground saying that they are in need of ARV because people underground, they are in, uh, they need them, uh, you know, almost pleading because uh, from this letter that I am holding here. So that is the situation here um, that we, uh, or rather that is uh, unfolding at this moment in time at the site, uh, Michelle, as, you know, these community members, they are saying that they will continue to do this. But like I indicated that statement from uh, Presidency, President Ramaphosa, indicating that this Stalefontaine mine, it is a crime uh, scene and therefore, uh, you know, as much as they they will be sending help in terms of uh, that rescue team that will come, though we don't know the timeline as yet. I guess maybe hopefully that is what MEC Vessels Moreng will reflect later on at 2 o'clock when he, after he has that engagement with stakeholders. Um, but also uh, there will be a continuation of law enforcement uh, officials on the ground conducting this operation Vala Umkoti. A wrap of the events in Stillfontein so far. Thanks very much indeed. Our reporters at Seboko and Zinikom Shlava.